that's what they rebel. say revolutionaries don't have no fun. Well, that's what they say. We've been having fun. We've been having fun out here. We waiting on the world to join us. Black and green. It's only revolution, baby. It's only revolution, baby. Ain't that hard, but I'm going to do it. Ready over there. That's right. Uh, it's from a church. Welcome to the Revolutionary Road Radio Show. And I know you're saying to yourself, wow, it's 8 o'clock. You're on early. Ah, yeah. ah. Anyway, that's my uh, Mr. Engineer Pete there. Uh, I got to tune into his sports show on Saturday, by the way. I highly recommend. Uh, what, what's it called again, Pete? It's the Sports Web, the only FM sports talk show in the Tampa Bay area from 3 to 5. Bring your passion, bring your excitement, just don't bring any nonsense. Saturday afternoons, a fan show, definitely tune in. <laughs> I'm your host, Peter Blake, giving you something to think about. Wow, you said that like a professional. Be careful. It's crazy, right? Yeah, but be careful. There's professionals here. Well, this is the Revolutionary Road Radio Show. We're doing a special edition. Uh, normally, when we do our special editions, they're two hours in a row. But uh, there was another show that uh, got preempted last Monday at 9 that is happening uh, tonight at 9. So we're doing this special show in two parts. Part one is from 8 to 9 tonight. The other one is from 10 to 11. From 8 to 9 tonight, we're going to be talking about the situation in Haiti. Many of y'all know we have been covering this uh, quite a bit over the last several weeks. In fact, we had another one-hour special a few weeks back with um, a gentleman who is with the... uh, national paper of the Haitian people uh, and also uh, Haitian people abroad in the diaspora called Libertad. And uh, we were real pleased to have him on. Uh, His name was Kim. And uh, I forgot his last name. I apologize to him if he is listening. Uh, And he shared with us very in depth of what's going on in Haiti. We were slated to have another guest, uh, a Haitian national, David Oxygen, who I understand will probably be on tonight with our guest. Um, and I'll introduce her in just a moment. Uh, but I want to say a few things about the Revolutionary Road Radio Show. We are going to be in the future doing a lot of these two-hour specials and may expand, uh, hopefully, to a two-hour show most weeks in the future. Um, and the reason for that is there is so, so much going on. It's hard to keep up with it. I do want to let you know that next week, while we'll be back to our one-hour format next week, we will have a special show with independent presidential candidate Vermin Supreme. I know, what a fun name. Uh, He is an independent candidate for president, uh, so we will be playing uh, or having him on, uh, interviewing him. We're also going to be playing an episode of one of uh, our engineers' favorite uh, episodes that we play from time to time of submedia.tv. It's the end of the world as we know it, and I feel fine. And uh, our poor uh, engineer has quite a job on that night because uh, it's known for its uh, expletives that we have to You're going to have to send that to me. I'll send it to you earlier than, uh, yeah, probably like one day when I'm here on Sundays, not doing much of anything. That would be great. Well, I'll be glad to. Go ahead and edit that for you. Uh, And it's going to give you some very, very important coverage about what's going on. Uh, In the second hour tonight at 10 o'clock, we are going to be covering. Uh, today is World Homeless Day, and we unveiled uh, in four cities the Homeless Bill of Rights. Uh, and uh, Florida is uh, in the process of looking at legislation to provide a Bill of Rights for homeless folks. So uh, that press conference happened today in Tampa, Orlando, Pensacola, and Fort Lauderdale. It was covered by uh, actually local news media here, including Bay News 9, Fox 13, and uh, ABC Channel 28. So you can check those out for the uh, press conference that happened today at uh, Homeless Helping Homeless. We will have folks on, including our sometime hosts, Connie Burton and Richard Pete, along with our calling guests uh, during the 10 o'clock hour. We'll also be giving a movie review of a very important movie that just came out. Uh, We are now official movie reviewers for... Uh, Movie Co. uh, Baywalk, otherwise known as The Sundial in downtown St. Pete. This past week, a movie came out about the Nat Turner uprisings, slave uprisings that happened in the uh, early 1800s in this country in in Virginia. And the name of the movie is ironically named The Birth of a Nation. We'll explain that in the second uh, hour at 10 o'clock. 
uh, why it's so ironically named. I had the privilege of going there with my stepson, TJ, who's hanging with us in the studio tonight as well. I want to give a special shout out to his mom and my lovely wife, Barbara, who's at home right now, uh, still trying to recover from feeling ill, as well as, of course, the illustrious Crown, Dion, who is our uh, regular uh, song that we play every week, and uh, also uh, Robin Harris in uh, Orlando and all those involved in our show. As you know, the Revolutionary Road Radio Show comes to you live every week from uh, downtown Clearwater and sometimes from remote sites including concerts we have done in the past and other events. Uh, we uh, unfortunately did not get to attend the Prophets of Rage show, but uh, we have attended a number of concerts and events and given live coverage from there. Uh, last night, uh, unfortunately, you may have heard that uh, we were going to be bringing Ajamu Baraka, the vice presidential candidate for the Green Party, uh, into town, and uh, that was postponed due to the hurricane coming through. So that event did not happen last night at USF St. Pete. But we will be bringing him in uh, at another time. He was in uh, Colombia. That's right, the country of Colombia, this past uh, several weeks, working with Colombian nationals and uh, those involved in the peace process. Many know that the president of Colombia was recently nominated for a Nobel Peace Prize for those kinds of uh, talks that have been happening around peace. But we want to let you know that the Revolutionary Road radio show comes to you live. You can check us out on the Tantalk1340.com website. That's www.tantalk1340.com. We are live streamed right now on the internet. We're also podcasted. You can download our podcast there. You can get us on your TuneIn app on your phone. You can listen online. And you also can check us out at our YouTube channel, uh, of the same name and our Facebook page, uh, two of them actually. One is the Facebook page, the Revolutionary Road Radio Show. Please like us on that. And also the friends of the Revolutionary Road Radio Show. Uh, this show, of course, is sponsored by a number, number of people, but in particular, we want to give a special shout out to three uh, long time or uh, one long time sponsor and two new time sponsors for the radio show. If you would like to advertise or sponsor this show, call us at 727 727- Two seven eight one five four seven, and we want to acknowledge St. Petersburg Community Acupuncture, offering the best in uh, Eastern and alternative medicines, particularly acupuncture. They are located at sixteen twenty four Central Avenue. That's sixteen twenty four Central Avenue in St. Petersburg, Florida, offering sliding scale appointments. Their number is eight two three seventeen hundred. That's eight two three seventeen hundred. A new sponsor coming on board is Crescent Lake Massage located on uh, 9th Street, or also known as Martin Luther King Boulevard in St. Petersburg at the uh, 20th Avenue block. And uh, you can call. uh, They also offer sliding scale massage therapy appointments, and we appreciate their support. You can, of course, reach them by uh, uh, their number as well. And uh, I'm pulling that up right now. I should have had that ready. But um, they... uh, I can speak from personal experience. They offer some uh, great work for those who need that kind of uh, special treatment. Their number is 727-251-4743. That's 727-251-4743. And of course, we want to continue to welcome Phoenix Productions, who produces a number of shows and concerts in the area. They have a show this Friday at the Cuban Club with... uh, Rat and a number of other uh, hair bands from the 80s. Uh, proceeds from these shows, by the way, benefit Refuge Ministries of Tampa Bay, which works with the homeless and recovering addicts. Well, our show tonight is a very important show in the continuing, uh, I guess you could say, uh, unfolding story of what's going on in Haiti. Uh, many know that Haiti was just hurt, hit real hard by Hurricane Matthew and uh, devastated a significant portion of the island. But in addition to that, there has been an ongoing struggle, as reported exclusively by this station uh, just a few weeks ago, uh, current political social repression of workers uh, who are trying to organize uh, on the island, uh, workers, uh, including dock workers and a number of other workers, uh, unions and uh, ways of speaking for their own self and moving towards the unoccupation of 
the United Nations, the United States, and the Clinton Foundation to get them removed from the island of Haiti. Uh, they have wreaked havoc on Haiti, and uh, we'll talk a little bit about that in a few moments, uh, including uh, things related to the um, Clinton Foundation, which, as many know, the debates happened last night, and uh, we feel it's important to address this issue because while we are an equal opportunity uh, criticizer of both Trump and Clinton because we feel the two-party system is corrupt, is corrupted by big money, by the Pentagon and by Wall Street, and that both offer different forms of danger to our country, we feel the is- situation in Haiti and what has gone on related to the Clinton Foundation cannot be ignored. So our guest tonight will be on the phone with me now, Nicole Phillips, who's the staff attorney at the Institute for Justice and Democracy in Haiti, based in Oakland, California. She is calling us live from Port-au-Prince, and it's my understanding, uh, I hope anyway, that David Oxygen may also be on with her, who is a Haitian national. He's Secretary General of the Haitian Popular Grassroots Organization, MOLGAF. That's M-O-L-E-G-H-A-F. And I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right. That's M-O-L-E-G-H-A-F. Joining me on the phone right now is Nicole Phillips. Nicole, are you there? I am. Good evening. Yes, thank you. Good evening. And I'm here sitting next to me is Oxygen Oxygen David. Oxygen David. And uh, you'll pardon me. I'm so glad that you're here not only to share your story, but to share his story via translating for him. Uh, I have very minimal skills when it comes to French. Uh, and I, I actually, unfortunately dropped out of a French class in college. Uh, but, um, I am so pleased to have you both on. And I know that it's very, very difficult circumstances uh, under which you come on. So let's start first real quick with you, Nicole. Uh, you are a staff attorney, as we mentioned, for the Institute for Justice and Democracy in Haiti. Tell us, what is that organization all about? Well, well thank you. Um, right, so the Institute for Justice and Democracy in Haiti, IJDH, um, was started in 2004 after the coup d'etat um, that the United States helped um, with to take out then president, then democratically elected President Jean-Bertrand Aristide. Um, And so what we realized was all the good work that um, our partner organizations had been doing in Haiti um, to restore rule of law in the country, um, those efforts were wiped out as soon as the United States government um, funded and and helped carry out this coup d'etat against President Aristide. So Brian Kincannon, the founder and executive director of IJDH, started the organization in order to make the United States safe for democracy in Haiti. So as we know, uh, or many may know, the history of Haiti is that it was the first uh, successful slave revolt and liberation of African slaves to happen in the Western Hemisphere and really the only successful slave revolt that resulted in a nation state and the overthrowing of the French rule of Haiti. And ever since then, colonial powers, including the United States, have tried to meddle in the affairs of state there and uh, really uh, destabilize the nation. And so uh, with your uh, group there, the Institute for Justice and Democracy in Haiti, your organization's intent is to look at that very issue and uh, I guess bring about resolution and independence again from being a client state of the UN and the United States. Is that accurate? Yeah, that's a great summary. Um, And I'm glad you you, um, mentioned the revolution and I'm sure Oxygen will have lots to say on that. Um, But just for IJDH, you know, what we're, we're looking for often, the, the legal cases that we bring, I'm an attorney and, um, you know, most of our staff are attorneys, um, and we, we do a few things. The first is we help support a, not a public interest law firm here in Haiti that's called the Bureau des Avocats Internationaux, International Lawyers Office, or BAI, um, and it's, that is, you know, a Haitian-led law firm that brings the high-profile, most important 
human rights cases in the country, um, and so strengthening rule of law here. So however we can help, that, that's sort of what we do a lot of times with international advocacy, because what we realize is it's not just what's happening in Haiti that is destabilizing for democracy. It's also what's happening in the United States, um, in France, in Canada, at the Organization of American States, at the United Nations, in Geneva, in New York, all of these things that I'm sure we'll, we'll talk about briefly this evening. Um, and so a lot of our work is doing lobbying and um, accountability work for them and their policies in Haiti to make sure they really are um, forwarding democracy in Haiti and, and, and also Haitians' economic, social, cultural rights um, to food and and, high, and higher living standards. Uh, our biggest case right now is against the United Nations for um, bringing through, <clears throat> excuse me, bringing through gross negligent cholera to the country um, that has resulted in um, the, the killing of, of, of um, 9,000 people, although 9,000 Haitians, although it's probably a lot higher figures, and so we can talk about that case more. But that just sort of gives you an idea of, of what lawyers from the United States can do to try and preserve um, democracy in Haiti. Um, if you would, um, of course, you are joined uh, by a Haitian national who is Secretary General of the popular grassroots organization that we mentioned, M-O-L-E, uh, G-H-A-F, uh, Oxygen David, or David Oxygen. I'm not sure which way I would say that. I'm, uh, But uh, we are very pleased that he is on and be able to be on this time. I know that there was some difficulty in trying to get him on a few weeks back. Uh, can you uh, please uh, introduce uh, Dave David to our organ uh, to our audience and tell us? Um, you know, wh- first of all, welcome. Uh, bonjour. Uh, my French is terrible. I would hate to uh, try much more than that. But uh, welcome to our show, uh, David. And if can you tell us? What is uh, M-O-L, uh, maybe you can help me pronounce it, M-O-L-E-G-H-A-F. What is that all about? Yes. <clears throat> so pardon me because I'll be translating. So you hear me translating a little bit. I try and mute, but occasionally you'll hear it. Bienvenue. <laughs> Okay. Et un gros bonjour révolutionnaire, un gros bonsoir révolutionnaire, une grosse salutation révolutionnaire avec nous-mêmes. Et l'amour comme ça pour une des vues ça. Et moi suis très content que Nicole tout au côté pas qui pour faire traduction. And um, a, a big uh, good evening, a, a big good day to revolutionary um, program, um, and a, a big thank you to, to Nicole who, who's here with me now. Et moi, vraiment content de participer dans l'émission euh, ça, dans le show ça, qui c'est un chemin révolutionnaire, une voix révolutionnaire, qui c'est une émission qui vont vous écouter. And I'm really, really happy to, to be here um, on this program with you, which is a, a, a revolutionary voice. Et mon légat, c'est m o l g H-A-F, M-O-L-E-G-H-A-F. So Molagaf is M-O-L-E-G-H-A-F. Qui se mouvement de liberté, d'égalité des Haïtiens pour la fraternité. Um, which is the, move, the movement of um, freedom and equality um, for Haitian solidarity. Eh, c'est une organisation eh, révolutionnaire eh, qui prend naissance exactement eh, dans le jour que Papa Nation, Jean-Jacques Dessaline, était assassiné, lui, qui c'est 17 octobre, eh, donc nous prenons naissance 17 octobre 2009. Um, so, and the organization um, takes the revolutionary um, quality from um, Jean-Jacques Dessaline. Um, who, who was a revolutionary from um, October 17th, uh, 1809. No, no, 2009. 2009. 2009. 2009. 2009. 2009. 
So Molegasmission is the, um, the, the fight against exploitation. Et comme organisation révolutionnaire, on est, nous existons, nous existons existé pour la bataille contre l'exploitation, contre la domination, contre l'exclusion sociale, contre la eh, classe sociale qui existait tout, et contre la bourgeoisie. Donc, so, um, Molegas existe pour battre contre l'exploitation, la domination, la social exclusion. Social classes and the bourgeoisie. So, c'est une lutte des classes qui nous mené. Lutte monégasque là, c'est une lutte des classes. Une lutte contre classe sociale. Et une lutte pour une transformation et le monde. Une lutte contre capital là, contre le capital qui existait dans mes une minorité qui c'est la bourgeoisie. And so it's a um, it's a fight against to, to, uh, it's a fight against classism. Um, and it's to trans its mission is to transform um, the, the capital that's held in the minority hands of the bourgeoisie. En gros, euh, la lutte du Molégas est une lutte permanente. Um, but in, in some, this, uh, the, the fight of Molégas is a permanent fight. Ok, c'est ça, nous avons dit, et d'abord, sur Molégas, comme organisation révolutionnaire, comme bataille, contre l'exploitation, la classe ouvrière. And so that's what we can say about um, the, the mission of um, Molegas, which is a revolutionary organization against um, um, exploitation and for the worker class. Now, um, David, can you uh, share with us what is the current situation? Now, I'm not talking about the hurricane at this point, but I'm talking about the current political situation uh, and uh, the very dangerous situation, mind you, that we've been told is going on in Haiti as it relates to the UN, the United States, and the Clinton Foundation. Haiti a vécu un moment qui est très difficile et sur le plan politique. Haiti is living in a situation right now that's very difficult in terms of its political plan. Let me see. Haïti a vu une situation politique qui est vraiment difficile. C'est parce que Haïti trouvait depuis 1915, 1-9-1-5, depuis 1915, en bas occupation, domination, gros pays impérialistes, spécialement les États-Unis. Um, and the reason that I say that this is a, a, a difficult political situation is because of what occurred in 1915 to 1931, which is the occupation by the United States. Ces situations a été trouvée là sur le plan de politique en bas d'une occupation qui fait Haïti a dégingolé Jean Valéa. Situation politique pays a est vraiment triste parce que pays a occupé, un pays qui occupé politiquement il pas grand monde dans Haïti. C'est ça qui fait Haïti sous papier, il dit son pays qui grand monde mais dans la réalité Haïti pas grand monde parce que il est en bas joue en bas main impérialiste américain cap tout pisine chaque jour. Um and so this occupation from a political perspective is is very sad for the country um because you don't have either the, the word grand monde which is like big big figures um big personage figures because it's being controlled by imperialists so they can't naturally rise within within the country. Et après des pas matéli qui te gagne un projet qui t'a porté projet la classe dominante projet gros pays impérialiste au projet Canada projet Italie Hello Did we just lose them Um this of course is coming to us live from Port-au-Prince in Haiti so we understandably may have some uh, issues like this arise. In the meantime, while we're waiting that for them to call back, let me uh, make a few announcements and let you know what's going on in the area. Uh, this, of course, is the Revolutionary Road Radio Show, and we're bringing to you live from Haiti an interview with um, Nicole Phillips, who is the staff attorney at the Institute for Justice and Democracy in Haiti, and also David Oxygen, who is a Haitian National Secretary General of the Haitian Popular Grassroots Organization, Molgaf. Molgaf. 
Uh, and um, we uh, want you to, of course, recognize and support this show. If you have an, uh, a desire to uh, advertise or underwrite this show, you can call us at 727-278-1547. And we do want to thank all our sponsors, including uh, St. Petersburg Community Acupuncture, located at 1624 Central Avenue. They can be reached at 727 727- 823-1700. That's 727-823-1700. Uh, offering sliding scale appointments. Uh, we also want to thank uh, Crescent Lakes Massage Therapy on uh, Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard in St. Petersburg at the uh, 2000 block. And uh, Phoenix Productions. This show is brought to you every week as a production of Squatter Productions, the refuge of Tampa Bay and the Poor People's Economic Human Rights Campaign. Uh, we are webcasted, podcasted, and on your TuneIn app. And you can get all that by going to Tantalk1340.com. You can listen on our YouTube channel as well and like us on Facebook. We also want to thank those who endorse and support this show, including the Poor People's Economic Human Rights Campaign, The Refuge, Pinellas Greens, Gulf Coast Greens, Refuge Workers Center, St. Pete for Peace, Uhuru Solidarity, Students for Democratic Society at USF St. Pete, the League of Revolutionaries for New America, Food Not Bombs, St. Petersburg, the Florida Homeless Action Coalition, and a whole host of others that support this. There are several things coming to the area we want to let you know about, including a film this Wednesday night sponsored by St. Pete for Peace, Wednesday at 7 p.m. at Community Cafe, 2450 Central Avenue. That's 2450 Central Avenue. It's called The Merchants of Doubt at 7 p.m. Every uh, Wednesday night, they have documentary films. Uh, we will be coming, having in the coming weeks interviews with uh, next week of Vermin Supreme, who is an independent candidate for president. Also, we will finally have our interview with Jill Stein, as well as Ajamu Baraka, the president and vice presidential candidate, respectively, of the Green Party of Florida. Uh, and uh, this um, this Saturday, there is also a rescheduled protest to protest the Sable Trail Energy's uh, boycott to fight and stop the Sable Trail, which is a Florida version of what is happening up in North Dakota, the same kind of struggle around the pipeline issue. And we are going to have a rally this Saturday uh, at uh, 10 a.m., rescheduled from this past Saturday. And a number of other things coming up, including a day in solidarity with the African People's Socialist Party in Gainesville, uh, October 19th. And um, we uh, will be uh, hosting uh, a film ourselves uh, that we'll be letting you know about in December. Not too, quite a few uh, weeks off, but we want to let you know about that in early December. That is the best democracy that money can buy, Greg Palace, the investigative reporter for the Guardian's documentary film. And finally, uh, on on 4th of uh, November uh, at Janice Lanning, we will be involved in sponsorship of a concert with band Switchfoot and Reliant K. Uh, So as we come back from our announcements, uh, we have back on the air with us Nicole Phillips and David Oxygen. Uh, so sorry about uh, losing you there, but I'm sure that there are quite a few difficulties in keeping uh, phone lines open in the aftermath of Hurricane Matthew. So uh, please uh, continue. Uh, I think we were talking about what Molagoff does and uh, the current political situation. Yes, thank you. And our apologies um, for dropping off. So what, what Oxygen was saying when we dropped off was that um, the, the, the political situation um, under former President Michel Martelly um, was a political system that was dominated by the United States, um, Canada, and, uh, and, and European countries. Um, now there is a, a new president, um, an, an interim president um, named Justin Prouver, um, and that he's saying this is a continuity of, um, of Martelly's Do we lose them again? Oh, boy. Well, folks, we need to understand what we're dealing with here is not only an international call, but a country, Port-au-Prince, that was just recently devastated, as many know, by Hurricane Matthew. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, the death toll at this point is uh, closing to uh, up to 900 people now. Uh, the whole south part of the island, I believe, was devastated. 
thousands, uh, tens of thousands have been left homeless. And it's a very tragic situation going on in Haiti. And uh, we have our guest back on. How are you? Sorry about that. Hi. Thank you. Sorry about that. I think you were about to ask a question. Yeah, really, uh, let's get to the heart of the matter here, or at least one of the matters. Uh, We know that the United Nations and the United States have played a role in devastating and perpetuating the devastation of uh, what is happening with um, with Haiti itself and with those who would try to organize to uh, remove the the uh, colonizing power of the UN and the United States. But in particular, that we have heard much about and much criticism beginning to come out, unfortunately, uh, all too often from the Trump campaign. And as we have said many times on this station uh, or on this show, we stand against the two-party system as it exists because it's controlled by big money and corporations. So we are no fan of Trump as well as Hillary. But it's our understanding that the Clinton Foundation has played a rather negative role in uh, Haiti's situation, and even uh, with uh, the uh, thwarting of organizing workers, and we'll get into some of the more insidious aspects of this in just a few moments, but uh, I was wondering if uh, both you, Nicole, and of course David, uh, David, would um, comment on the role the Clinton Foundation has played. Uh, effectivement, uh so we'll start with the, the Clinton Foundation. Mais avant situation PIA, la première question, demander pour nous faire une tirage. Um, on commence par dernière qui c'est fondation Clinton, mais avant nous commencer sous fondation Clinton, on demander pour nous faire un petit ajout pour ajouter un bagage sous situation PIA. So we'll start with just talking about the Clinton Foundation, but before we do that, I wanted to, to mention one thing um, about the situation. Situation PIA, sur le plan politique, globalement, c'est une situation passadio dans les affaires internes de l'IA. Hello? It is one of political interference by imperialist countries. Laisser une situation titel, une situation politique même mise, laisser une situation côté qui ambassadio a dicté qui ça que nous même nous devons faire comme pays. So it's a situation where ambassador, emba, embassies themselves are dictating what the Haitian government should be doing. Et situation politique pays a, les situations n'a continué à appliquer politique. Folks, be, be patient with us. Uh, it really has very little to do with both us or uh, our guests. Uh, we are dealing with, again, a very tenuous, serious situation happening in Haiti, uh, not just as a result of the physical aftermath of a devastating hurricane that has killed hundreds, but also of uh, the colonizing powers of the UN, the United States, and in particular, the Clinton Foundation, which we'll be getting to as soon as we hear back from them. But let me just say this, that uh, while uh, the public has focused on the debates uh, on rather sick, twisted, disturbing statements being made by the Trump camp, uh, very little has been said about what is going on in relation to the Clinton Foundation's misdoings in Haiti as well as Saudi Arabia. So now we're back with our guests again. Um, so please continue. Oui, et globalement, et situation politique pour y agir dans ce là, et c'est une situation politique d'en continuer à appliquer politique néolibérale là, qui donne misère, pauvreté, exploitation, acte, exclusion sociale. And so the political um, policy in place is one that brings is neoliberal. Uh, and bring um, misery and um, exploitation um, and fight against workers. It's a situation, so politically, to continue with the pillage of resources, to continue with the resources, with a package of multinational 
Donc, le pays impérialiste qui a volé les ressources que nous avons dans ce sol, nous donc pour réduire le pays, pour faire Haïti pour nos pays qui viennent plus pauvres que j'en dis, et c'est eux-mêmes qui avons voulu. Um, and so um, there are lots of policies that are um, sort of taking our money and just making the country more poor um, and blaming Haitians for this, although this is a neoliberal policy dictated by, by Haitians. Okay. Excuse me, by the international community. Okay, pour question eh, qui vient à ouais avec question Fondation Clinton Nakoumia. So for the, going back to your question about the Clinton Foundation. Alors, on n'est pas position nous comme militants révolutionnaires, mais on a toujours très critique envers Fondation Clinton. And so our, um, our, 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 our stance is always very critical of the Clinton Foundation. Les nous critiques, les mots légales critiques et envers Fondation Clinton, ça va vous dire nos bonnes conditions. And just because we're criticizing the Clinton Foundation does not mean that we support Trump. And so we know that with these, or these elections that are coming up, criticizing Clinton can favor or can help Trump. And for us at Molegaf, Clinton and, and Trump are the same thing. So it's, it's two politics that... To, Two of the same politics that should be thrown in the trash. Okay, tout le monde connaît, tout haïtien conséquent, tout haïtien révolutionnaire, tout haïtien progressiste connaît, Fondation Bill Clinton, c'est une fondation qui te prend naissance pour bloquer résistance lutte en Haïti. So everybody, revolutionary and progressive Haitians know that the Clinton Foundation's mission is to block um, progressive. Um, Movement within Haitian society. Et nous capable de considérer la fondation Bill Clinton de participer dans des trucs pays. And the foundation of Bill Clinton has participated in the destruction of the country. Et surtout dans le domaine agricole. Especially in the domain of agriculture. Et fondation Bill Clinton crée donc ça nourrit les productions nationales nous pour capable de faire entrer des fruits qui sortent directement aux États-Unis. Um, and so the Clintons. Um, have, for example, destroyed the rice production. Um, um, and, and I'll just add a little bit to this, um, but, which is something that he admitted in 2010, I'm not sorry, uh, which is something that he admitted in, in, in 2010 after the earthquake, that while um, he was president, um, that he cut subsidies um, for Haiti so that American rice was fully subsidized Um, where Haitian rights was not allowed to be subsidized, um, and then that, so took off the tariff. And so what that made was that Haitian rice was much more expensive compared to American rice, um, and so that bottomed out the market and turn, you know, made a lot of Haitian farmers um, poor. They lost their, their, um, their market. They couldn't afford to even harvest um, or plant new crops of rice, so that destroyed um, the, the Haitian rice market. Et nous pas oublier nous-mêmes au niveau oligarque que fondation Bill Clinton participé dans et manger donc tout l'argent que pays a été gagné dans cadre aide solidarité internationale le débat sur question donc pour reconstruire Haïti donc question donc et l'argent c'est dans mais il a géré ensemble avec CIRH donc Bill Clinton gagné le grand pays dans manger l'argent ça yo en dans fondation So a lot of the money that was eaten by the Clinton Foundation and their partnerships with the international community um, wasn't used to help with Haitian reconstruction. Um, instead, it was sort of just eaten by themselves, uh, taken as expenses by themselves. C'est une fondation anti-élite qui va d'accord avec le syndical et qui investit un peu l'argent pour craser le syndical. And so it's also an, uh, the foundation is also an organization. Um, that is very anti-union, um, and that um, it, one of its purposes is to bust unions. Okay, so it's a foundation criminal that is and that takes place especially to stand in front of the first republic that is here. And so it's a criminal foundation that is, is there to sort of go against the first um, um, black country in the world. Okay. Ah, c'est au côté de Bill Clinton avec toute fondation là nous agit comme ça. Mais la question et le débat qui gagne entre Trump et, et Hillary Clinton, et tous les deux pour aller porter une politique désastreuse, une 
politique criminelle, pour politique pour bombarder ce pays, pour politique pour qu'il y ait occupation, pour politique pour établir donc et discrimination, pour politique pour continuer à dominer ce pays. Donc, quel était Bill Clinton, quel était Hillary Clinton, quel était Donald Trump, pas grand-chose qui va changer dans la question Haïti. And so the two, whether it's Bill Clinton, oh, excuse me, whether it's Hillary Clinton or Donald Trump, um, which these are both two politics that are disastrous. Um, both of their politics would keep up occupation, um, would keep up dis discrimination, um, and so both of them would be equally bad and criminal. Mon gars, pensez la élection pour le gagner aux États-Unis et peuple américain et qui c'est un peuple payant, on peut peuple. Il n'y a pas de voter ni pour Donald Trump, ni pour Hillary Clinton. So we think that the American people should, in this upcoming election, should vote for neither Hillary Clinton nor Donald Trump. Donc, il n'y a pas de changement dans la politique extérieure avec ni Hillary Clinton ni Donald Trump. So you won't have any changes in external politics uh, if you, with either Clinton or Bush. C'est toujours, toujours politique pour Al-Bomba de Irak bombarder Afghanistan et faire solidarité avec Israël contre Palestine et qu'aimer ce pays pour lui en bas exploitation, c'est politique donc pour dominer le Conseil de sécurité des Nations Unies. And so it's, it's always going to be a, a game, a political game with either of those, um, of exploitation against smaller countries, for example, Israel against um, Palestine, it will always be to, to dominate smaller countries. Et c'est sans organisation ça yo nous devons vous mettre et sans type de président ça nous devons vous mettre peuple américain à partir de vos organisations ça yo pour arriver prendre pouvoir aux États-Unis c'est l'élite autonome organisation syndicale yo c'est l'élite autonome organisation ouvrière yo c'est l'élite autonome organisation populaire yo en d'un pays États-Unis qui veut vous mettre pour arriver prendre pouvoir sans et question et républicain sans question de Parti démocrate. Tous les deux partis, c'est parti qui a plongé les États-Unis dans l'angoût, dans tout son fond. Et donc, la fight really has to be one about autonomy. Donc, so Molegas is an organization, is an autonomous organization. Um, and that, that sort of, that, the, the autonomous fight is, is the most important against this domination. Now, if I could, um, it's my uh, understanding that The situation has gotten to the point of dire in relation to this political climate, uh, resulting recently in the emergence of what seems to be uh, a growing uh, group of uh, vigilante, militia, death squad type groups, uh, of which participated in the assassination of one of the uh, leaders of Molagov and uh, the worker movement. And this has resulted also in you, uh, David, having to uh, be uh, extra careful and at times be in hiding. Uh, could you address that? Merci pour question. Thank you for this question. Assassinat David Chinon, toujours dit So the um, the assassination of, of David Chen with, with Molegas. Mon qui a une responsabilité, organisation qui est ça comme responsabilité, qui participe comme auteur intellectuel dans la question assassiné David Chenon, ici donc force occupation comme et comme organisation, ici donc force occupation qui est Nations Unies a dirigé avec plusieurs contingents dans le pays. Um, and and so David Chen um, was a leader of of Molegas and and so his His struggle, um, for what he was fighting for, was against um, the imperialism um, that we're talking about. Ok, je ne veux dire là, nous bail comme responsabilité, mon qui responsable, institution qui responsable, c'est Nations Unies. And so, what we would say today is, who is responsible for his assassination is the United Nations. Et c'est force occupation. It's the occupation force. Et c'est un assassinat contre la démocratie. It's an um, assassination against democracy. Against the revolution coming into Haiti. Um, and so, and against the people that are always in the fight. So, 
comrade Mudavichin Simeon. And so just after the assassination of our comrade Davichin Simeon. Il y a un lit qui déclenche contre Molega. There became a fight um, against Molega. C'est ça que fait une semaine après. Donc ils vont tentatif pour assassiner mais même qui c'est Oxygène David, secrétaire général Molega. And so a week afterwards there was an attempted assassination of me as secretary general of Molega. Et depuis le ça, c'est et la marron qui m'y est pour capable protéger tête moi pendant ma régler dossier yo sur le plan juridique avec bureau avocat international dont Mr. Mario Joseph a dirigé. And so since then I've been um hiding my head um trying to stay safe um and in the meantime pursuing legal action with the help of Mario Joseph from the the Bureau des Avocats Internationaux the organization I mentioned the beginning. Mais ça nous connaît, ça nous les gars connaît. So one thing that Molegas knows quand que occupation a toujours existé a toujours des persécutions. And as long as the occupation exists there always be persecution. Quand que a des exploitations la classe ouvrière a toujours des persécutions. And as long as there will be exploitation against the worker class there will be ex- Mais on fait le bagage pour les gars qu'on est. C'est résistance populaire, résistance jusqu'à ce que nous ayons victoire sur tout ennemi des classes ouvrières. Donc, so one thing that we know that's important is the resistance um, against all this. Donc, et je dis à et dossier à la marché, bien que donc les coco qui n'a achevé la marché et BAI donc a avancé avec dossier à même même toujours protéger tête moins, mais tête moins en position pour anti changement yo pour criminel yo pour ka supporter ou ki pa sou pays ya par assassiner men même j'ai été assassiné David Chinsin. Um and so um the the legal case is is moving forward and I'm continuing to protect myself um and um and and there needs to be justice for the assassination of of David Chinsin. Okay. So okay. So in essence what this has come to has been uh, both direct interference in the sovereignty of Haiti and in the sovereignty of workers who are choosing to organize and unionize uh, at the hands of uh, the United Nations and, and the United States, and in specific, the Clinton Foundation. And what has happened, uh, whether directly or indirectly, is that these groups have played a role in the emergence of these uh I guess you could say death squads uh, that have attempted to kill you as well as uh, participated in the death and murder of one of your leaders. Is that accurate? Jean Nouvelle, dès le départ, et Fondation Bill Clinton, Fondation Bill Clinton avec Madame Hillary Clinton qui ont fondation qui toujours présent dans toute action qui allait contre Marti. And and so um what I can say is that the foundation of Bill Clinton and Hillary Clinton um is always present um in in these types of acts. Et on nous prend un exemple. I'll give you an example. Fondation eh, Bill Clinton fondation Hillary Clinton pas jamais présent dans situation triste et martio à vivre chaque jour. Nous pas jamais porter si poyo dans la logique pour changer condition martio. And so the, the, the Clinton the foundation is never involved in efforts that would really change um the situation the condition of the way people live for the masses of Haiti. Et nous capable comparer donc fondation il a réglé une zone de Clinton concours entreprise qui c'est monde santo ça détruit ma sur la question agriculture. C'est même où on a fondation donc et il que nous n'a vu. C'est pas une fondation qui là pour participer dans le changement la vie monsieur Chabu. And so um we can compare the the foundation of Bill and Hillary Clinton with Monsanto um that has destroyed the agriculture in the country and the foundation is not there to change the situation of the masses in Haiti. C'est ça que fait et fondation Bill Clinton fondation Hillary Clinton pour juste supporter donc et grandon yo bourgeois yo et pour continuer exploiter donc ouvriers pour continuer dominer paysans en paix pour continuer exclure masse dans quartier populaire c'est rôle ça fondation yen dans pays 
Um, and so the, the foundation um, continues to play a role in exploiting um, workers and um, um, and also pay, you know, peasants who don't have land. Et c'est ça que la fondation Blue Green Zone est toujours supportée, donc et des anciens militaires, une série de monde et qui ont participé dans le coup d'État. Et nous prenons par exemple, la fondation Blue Green Zone supportait des séries de putschistes qui étaient faits pour l'État de 1991, qui étaient faits pour l'État de 2004 et qui continuaient à jouer au rôle pour faire un autre coup d'État et sous nos peuples-là, à continuer à plonger les peuples-là dans la médiocrité, dans l'ignorance, dans le grand goût, dans la musique. And so the Clintons um, are support, support the bourgeois, but they also support um, the military that participated in the 1991 coup d'état against President Aristide and then the 2004 coup d'état against President Aristide. And it's that we have a lot of organizations revolutionaires, and we have a lot of people with the class of the people, and we have a lot of foundations, and we have décider ou les gars décider bataille contre fondation ça ensemble avec la classe ouvrière ensemble avec organisation syndicale. And so Molegas in solidarity with the worker worker class um, is against the, the Clinton. OK, c'est position nous et sous question fondation de Clinton non dans lutte pour détruire marché. And that, that's our position in this fight against the Clinton with their mission to destroy um, the, the Haitian middle class. Um I have to interject. Unfortunately, we're down to the last two minutes of our show, and boy, this has been jam-packed. We didn't really even get to talk anything about the devastation that happened with Hurricane Matthew, which obviously is all over the news, and I know uh, further interference may result as a a result of what happened, uh, both with the Clinton Foundation there and the aftermath of the earthquake and now the hurricane and the interference in the... Uh, rule of sovereignty of the nation of Haiti. I do want to thank you both for being on our show. I want to let people know that we are creating a solidarity fund, Molagov backslash Haiti Solidarity Fund, and you can go to www.paypal.me backslash The Refuge Florida. That's The with a capital T, Refuge with a capital R, and then FL capital that is www.paypal.me backslash the refuge florida thank you again nicole phillips and david oxyjohn for being on and uh we we are so appreciative of your willingness to talk with us and let us know what's going on in haiti and i hope that we will continue to have contact with you uh, please give a number in closing that they can call to find out more about this are you there okay Well, we did lose our guest, but again, thank you for listening to the Revolutionary Road Radio Show. We will be back on at 10 o'clock dealing with the issue of homelessness and a homeless bill of rights as well as uh, other topics. The Revolutionary Road Radio Show had this exclusive one-hour interview to you, our listeners, uh, breaking, breaking news about the Clinton Foundation's interference in Haiti.